In this video, I am officially releasing my custom GPT. I've been working on this for a few days now, and I'm pretty sure I've got it to the point where anyone can plug it in and make good, unique content specific to their business. So this is the content machine. We'll just give this a little whirl right here, and then I'll explain how it works, and then you can just find it in the description. There's no free course. There's no links. There's nothing like that. You can just literally click on the chat GPT in the description. Now I did change it slightly. Um, so there's no need to input CSVs. There's no need to edit the actual content machine, etc., etc. So you can start it off by saying hi, and it will ask you for a few things. So say, welcome to get started on your SEO optimized article. I need a few details. What website am I ranking for? So we'll just give it two men dot it just like this. And what it's actually going to do is it's going to search the internet. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to understand what uh, this website is. Okay, there was a little problem there. I'm not really sure what happened, but it was trying to use data analysis instead of uh, browse by Bing. So I just changed it a little bit just to make sure that it's using t um, browse by Bing. And you can see it now understands what my website is. Now, if I did this without doing browse by Bing or if I was with a new website, then the context of the article would be different, if that makes sense. So now it knows all of this information specifically about two men. Okay, so this is one really, really nice part of the content machine. You might notice this is also prepping. Um, it's kind of prepping. It's basically the same thing as prepping. And we all know that prepping is actually the way to produce the best content. It's just not the fastest way to produce content. So we'll just give it a keyword here. Again, I've got so many ways to find keywords. It, I, I'm just using keywordtool.io at the minute though. Um, it's basically my favorite keyword method. So we're just gonna write Italian suits here and we're just gonna quickly find a keyword. We'll do everything live in this video. So let's say, um, let's do an article about Italian suit fabric. This would be a good one. So we'll say Italian suit fabric. Then the content machine is going to ask us for some internal links. So the really nice thing about that is because now it knows that it's about suit fabrics. It should specifically look for suit fabric uh, here. So there are loads and loads of suits here. Men's suits, track suits, not quite suits, kit on track suits, cotton track suit, wool suits, kit on suits, boss suits, etc., etc. Italian designer cashmere suits, virgin wool suits, etc., etc. So let's click start on. This is a Chrome extension called Sitemap to Clipboard, okay, uh, which is what I'm using here. So all you do is you go to your sitemap, and if you're on Shopify, go to your collections. If you're on WordPress, go to your categories, and then just copy them, and then we'll just Control V here. You could do it so you only give it the links that you actually want it to use or something. But I mean, to be honest with you, I'm just going to do it like this. And then final question is how many generations should I generate for this article? So I'm going to say four. And what that means is it's going to produce the first part of the article, the second part, the third part, and then the fourth part. So let's see uh, what kind of content this actually makes. Okay, so this is the first part of the article right here. So we'll press copy here. It did only give one um, internal link, which is kind of annoying, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll delete this and we'll delete this. And also it gave me key takeaways. This is fine. Um, you can just use bullet points. I do personally prefer tables, but bullet points are also fine. So after the first generation, you just say continue and then it will continue from, it'll just write something else. Here's the second generation. So if this is worked, this should not be H1, but I mean, it's not that difficult to change it if it is H1. But I very, very specifically have made this, so that shouldn't be H1. It's not, it's H2. Perfect. So this took a lot of prompt engineering, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and yes, I was already fully aware that this is currently the only way to write long-form content using ChatGPT. It is doing it sequentially. At the bottom of each section as well, it says, do you want me to visualize data from this article? You can just at each stage create some kind of data visualization if you want. That would probably help you rank as well. And also we're gonna be creating a featured image at the end of the article as well. So if you, it's, it's really, really hard to get ChatGPT to use um, 
internal links that are kind of like relevant. Like we have super fine wool. Um, we have pure cashmere. We have cashmere blends. We have all of these collections, but it's not using them. Instead, what it's doing is just using any collection. Like you can see here, sophisticated shirts, luxurious overcoats. There's nothing wrong with that. I just would have preferred if it. I would have preferred it if it had used cashmere blazers, cashmere suits, etc. So what you can do is you can just give it those internal links. You can just give it the ones that you wanted to use. What I did was I just gave it a massive list. And then we'll finally say finish the article because this is, this is now the fourth and final generation. Let's delete this. We're looking pretty beefy so far, as you can see here. Um, we will need some visualizations or some images and things like that. It's a really, really nice thing. At any stage, you can just say, create me an image, and then you can put it there. I generally wait until the end just because I'm worried that it's going to go crazy and start messing around and start ruining everything when I've already got good content. Now, one thing this should do is it should not use an internal link more than once. So it actually seems to have finally got the message after pretty much a week or th since GPTs were released, so maybe three days, four days of prompt engineering. I've finally managed to get it so it doesn't just keep repeating the same internal link over and over and over. So a lot of people have been asking me to show a full um, kind of article creation. So now I'm going to say, please visualize some data to make an interesting image for the article. Oh dear, it's using Dali when it should not be using Dali. It should be using, um, what's it called? Data visualizer, data analysis. That's okay. We'll just see what it comes up with um, using Dali first. This is pretty cool, to be fair. This is super, super nice. Um, that's not what I wanted though. So I meant using data analysis to... So we are still going to be making a featured image, and this is really, really cool. I really do like this a lot, but this is not what we wanted. So so what this does, and you do need to be careful if you're doing this for a client, but if you're just doing this for yourself, then you know just do whatever you want. Um, it kind of makes up data, but the data is normally fairly accurate, okay? So wool is actually the most popular suit fabric, followed by cashmere followed by silk, cotton, and then uh, linen. This is pretty accurate, okay? This is the most accurate thing you could expect for made-up data. So that's why I tend to use this. A lot of people are a bit worried about using this because the data isn't real or whatever, or, you know, it might be. But you could just say that you asked 10 people or, uh, no, uh, 20 people, let's say. Let's say you asked 100 people and these were your responses. No one's going to question that, okay? So don't worry too much about it, okay? I know it's a little bit weird and it might seem a little bit dodgy or whatever, but this data, at least for suits and things like that, it's, it's accurate. This is, if you asked 100 people what their favorite suit fabric was, 40% of them would probably say wool, 20% more or less would say cashmere, and then silk, cotton, and then linen is actually not very popular. Uh, linen and cotton are really, really, we do, we do, we don't sell a lot of them at all, or we didn't sell a lot of them before. So yeah, and then the final thing is I say, now make a blog featured image for this post. Make it horizontal. So then we copy this, and then what I'm going to do is, this is going to look really, really weird, okay? But um, I am going to put it as markdown here, okay? So let's just see how many words that was. Should be a decent, yeah, 1,509, perfect. And we'll copy this image and we'll put it, um, let's do popularity. No. Uh, let's put it a little bit further down because we want it to break up, um, you know, the wall of text. We should right click here, alt text, um, pie chart showing the popularity of Italian suit fabrics. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that actually goes on to Shopify afterwards. Um, don't quote me on that. And then we get the featured image like this. That's pretty good. Uh, it's literally perfect. I'm, I'm fine with that. And we put that here. 
And then we put this key takeaways under here. I would normally ask for a table, to be honest with you, but yeah, I'm just... I, I, honestly, the, the prompt says table. No one said do bullet points, but you know what ChatGPT is like. So yeah, there you go. And then this is pretty much deliverable, okay? Um, so the person that is delivering the content or putting it on the website would right-click here, view our actions, save to keep, okay, and then download the image. They can copy this directly into uh, their CMS, WordPress, Shopify, and then all you need to do is Control A, put it on Markdown to HTML, and then take the raw HTML. Raw HTML will go directly into WordPress, okay? And it will also go directly into Shopify. So let me show you how that works. Let's go to add new post here. And then I should just be able to control V this. Use the full editor. That, see, that was HTML, okay? Now this becomes a link to incomestreamsurfers.com slash collection slash suits. That's the way it works, okay? Now you can see this is not that wall of texty, to be honest with you. This is pretty good. It's got a lot of lists, etc. So we'll just go back to um, this and we'll take this image. I believe you can just copy and paste these directly. Yes, you can. Perfect. And then you would just set the featured image, okay? Which is easy. Featured image, set featured image. Uh, upload, select, that'd be this one probably, no. Oh no, I never downloaded it. Download. Upload, select. There we go, perfect. Okay, so that is now a complete article. And yeah, there's not really much more to it. Shopify works in exactly the same way. You just go onto the HTML part of the blog editor and you put the HTML there and then you switch it to the normal editor and you'll find you have a complete article ready to go. Set featured image. Let's just publish this. Uh, it's going to have a long URL. So actually I do like to change the URL as well. I may as well show everything. So let's click here. What I like to do is I like to change the URL to just something interesting like um, Italian, sorry, not interesting, something simple, Italian suit, fabrics, complete guide, something like that. And then we'll update this and then we'll view post. So that's it. That's everything. These are now internal links. Um, let's have a look. Yeah. So obviously these don't exist because this is not two men, but you get the idea. This is how I write my content. You can embed products as well. I would recommend embedding products. I really like these ChatGPT lines that it puts in. I think they're really, really cool and they look really, really nice on WordPress. But yeah, that's everything. That's my complete process. That's my uh, GPT bot. Let's have a quick look at how it works because I did say that we would see how it works. So I'm just going to go to edit GPT and configure. And yeah, basically it took me a lot of prompt engineering to get this done. Your objective is to write one comprehensive article that will be posted to my website. Taking this into account, you should never repeat yourself over generations. You should never use an internal link more than once. So scratch it out once it's been used. Also, I'm just going to add, um, try to use relevant internal links for the article. Okay, you are SEO writer GPT. You strictly write content, which is SEO optimizing and rank on Google. Strictly only use an internal link once. This didn't work. I had to write it here for some reason. Strictly space out internal links throughout the article. Strictly use logical and keyword rich anchor text for all internal links. Strictly use H1 header tags at the top and then H2 or H3 header tags for other titles. Never write H1, H2, or H3. Strictly create a key takeaways table. I'm just going to put this in capital letters at the top of every article. Please make it a table. Strictly write interesting, unique, and use burstiness and creativity to write your articles. This should say content. Strictly do not converse with me. Just write content. It doesn't follow this either. Do not conclude the content until the final generation of the article. Strictly create tables and lists throughout the article. Do add to add, I should say, to add rankability to the articles. Strictly at the end of the article, you should say, do you want me to visualize data from this article? Use data analysis to do so. The generations are to get one complete article, so never repeat yourself over generations, blah, 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 blah. 
At the start of every conversation, you must ask the following four questions. What website am I writing for? Once it's given, research the website and understand the context. Use Browse by Bing. What is the keyword? Once it's given, research the keyword and understand the context. What are the internal links to include? Use these to shape the article. How many generations should I generate for the article? Ask these questions one by one. Sorry, that's just my uh, RuneScape in the background. Update, confirm. Okay, that's pretty much everything, guys. I'm just going to spend the last couple of minutes here. Uh, you can leave if you don't want to see this. I'm just going to make my own uh, Dali photo real quick. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. It needs web browsing, it needs Dali, and it needs a code interpreter. I really don't like knowledge here. I, I just don't think it works that well right now. I'm sure it'll work better in like a few weeks. But at least for now, I just I really don't think it works that well. It only reads like a part of a CSV. And it has all sorts of problems. Using this for internal links does not work properly, okay? It'd be nice if it does, but it's actually not really that necessary because of, as I showed you in this video, you can just feed it your own internal links anyway. Okay, I really don't like this, but it'll have to do for now. We are now live. You can find this in the description without any messing around whatsoever. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.